Once, a wise man said, there is only one boss, and he can fire everybody in the company from the chairman on down, simply by spending his money somewhere else. This boss is you, the customer. This man is known as Sam Walton, but you may know him as the founder of Walmart. Today's world revolves around economy. The traditional image of a monarch shifted from a throne where the king and queen are seated to the marketplace where the seller became the servant who works hard to satisfy the desires of his liege who is known as the customer. And this change did not happen overnight. In fact, the customer is king from a long time ago and its reputation increased with the increase in competition between sellers and the diverse options and products available for the customer. If you don't like Snickers, you're not you when you're hungry. Snickers, you can always go with Mars. All the good things in a Mars bar. If you don't like a hoodie from Nike, you can always go with Adidas. If you don't want to purchase something from Target, you can always go to Walmart. Speaking of Walmart, the retail corporation that operates under the slogan of Save Money, Live Better, and that runs one of the biggest hypermarkets and discount store chains in the world, has quite an interesting story and an even more interesting founder. And we are unraveling all this for you and more in today's video. The end of a war, the birth of a legend. For most people, the year 1918 represents the end of a dark period of the world's history. It was in 1918 that the First World War ended. But for the Waltons, this year denotes a different event for them. It was in that day that Samuel Moore Walton was born. Sam Walton was born in Kingfisher, Oklahoma. He is the son of Thomas Gibson Walton and Nancy Lee. What's interesting is that Sam Walton did not grow in an urbanized place or in the middle of a city. He literally lived with his family in a farm. In fact, Sam and his family moved from one place to another for quite some time. The thing is, farming was not a definitive solution for the Waltons. This pushed Sam Walton to try mortgaging by working for his brother's mortgage company. To make things even worse, his childhood coincided with the Great Depression. This pushed Walton to do chores so that they could help his family go through this period in one piece. These chores included milking the family cow and filling the surplus in bottles in order to deliver it to customers. Additionally, as a kid, Sam Walton worked as a paperboy for the Columbia Daily Tribune and sold magazine subscriptions. This made Walton win the vote of most versatile boy in David H. Hickman's school. But Walton did not stop there. He wanted to support his family and help them get out of this financial crisis. So he considered joining college to seek better opportunities. Sam decided to attend the University of Missouri, and it was there that he worked what might be the strangest jobs ever. For instance, Walton decided to wait tables not in exchange for a salary, but in exchange for food. In 1940, upon his graduation with a bachelor's degree in economics, Walton was voted as permanent president of his class. More importantly, one of Sam Walton's rules at that time was that a person should be a giver more than a taker. Life-changing choices. After graduating from college, Walton developed an interest for management. He joined J.C. Penney in Des Moines, Iowa, where he spent a year and a half in a position that paid him literally $75 a month. But in 1942, a particular decision would alter his life path. In that year, Walton decided to resign from J.C. Penney because he expected that the U.S. military would induct him to serve in World War II. He later on worked as a munition worker in a munition plant near Tulsa, Oklahoma. After that, Walton joined the USAIC, U.S. Army Intelligence Corps, where he supervised security at aircraft plants and prisoner of war camps. Remarkably, Sam Walton became a captain, and not any sort of captain, a captain that was highly respected for his ethics and morals. But while in the Army, Walton had a moment of inspiration. It was in that period of time that Sam Walton discovered his passion for business and decided to become a businessman. For Walton, his childhood, his time in college, and his time in the army represented the entrepreneur's motivation, the sort of motivation that would separate him from the rest of the Waltons. Sam Walton's initiatives. At the age of 26, and right after leaving the military in 1945, Sam decided to manage his first store, which was a variety store in Newport, Arkansas. Sam received some help from his father-in-law, who gave him a loan of $20,000. He decided to invest this 20 k in addition to another 5 k that he had saved while in the military. This allowed him to get his first push and purchase the Ben Franklin Variety Store, who was a franchise of the Butler Brothers chain. 
As a manager, Walton had to innovate in order to win the competition against other stores. For instance, Walton pioneered the idea that if his store was able to offer the same products for the same price or for a better price than another store, which is located four hours by car far from his, he would definitely win the competition. Sam thought of the consumer's benefit in relation to his, and this made his store become a magnet for potential customers. More importantly, Walton focused on goods variety and availability. According to him, shelves have to be consistently filled with a variety of goods. Walton started making his way up and crafting his success story, and it has been reported that his sales volume grew from $80,000 to $225,000 in only three consecutive years. But as the saying goes, if you have no enemies, then you are in the wrong path. Walton got the attention of P.K. Holmes. Mr. Holmes was a landlord who came from a family with a history in retail and was indeed fascinated by Sam's achievement. The thing is, Mr. Holmes had one plan in his mind that may not suit Walton and his supporters. He wanted to reclaim the store that Walton claimed, including the franchise rights for his son. So what he did is that he refused to renew the lease. This, in addition to other jurisdictions, pushed Walton to sell the store's inventory and fixtures for $50,000. Walton claims that it was a fair price at that time. Before the current lease ended, Sam, his wife, and his father-in-law went for a new adventure. They considered purchasing a new location in Bentonville, Arkansas. Although facing some difficulties related to expansion to the store next door, Sam managed to buy the Bentonville store and raise his sales from $72,000 to $175,000 in only three years. Let the expansion begin. Now, Walton has two stores to manage, one in Bentonville, the Five and Dime, and the one with a one-year remaining lease in Newport. The problem is that the two stores were 220 miles apart, and this made Walton think about a new strategy, a strategy that is based on delegation. But delegation requires responsibility, right? Sam expansion initiatives coincided with the post-war baby boom. Now, Mr. Walton wants to conquer more places and have an even bigger share of the market. So in 1954, Sam, with his brother James Bud Walton, opened a store in Ruskin Heights in Missouri. But this did not mark the end. In fact, Sam was just starting. Later on, Sam opened a series of variety stores, and what he did after that was very special. He told his managers that if they invested in his business, they would later on take an equity stake in it. This pushed the managers to get more active and even more disciplined since they now have something that they're aspiring to reach. Sam's managers were indeed responsible individuals to the point that they innovated new ways and techniques in order to increase sales and limit losses, such as hiring a greeter in order to limit theft by shoplifters. As for Sam, this helped him delegate more effectively, and by 1962, 16 stores in Arkansas were owned by Sam and his brother Bud. Walmart comes to life. On July 2nd, 1962, Sam Walton decided to open the first Walmart in Rogers, Arkansas, and it was called the Walmart Discount City Store. Sam's vision was simple. He wanted to market products that were made in America and beat foreign competition. To do so, he needed to find American manufacturers and suppliers who could provide the entire Walmart chain with products with such a low price that would enable Walmart to compete with foreign markets. This was indeed a clever move by Sam Walton since, by doing so, he provided manufacturers with value that would in turn benefit him in both the short and long run by selling products with a lower price, thus attracting customers and guaranteeing loyalty and supply from the part of the manufacturers. More importantly, Walden had a different strategy than the other discount stores. Instead of locating his stores in big cities as other discount store owners did, he focused on small towns. He was more interested in locating the store near the customer rather than locating it in a place where he could guarantee high traffic. Again, Walden provided value to the customer instead of focusing on fast income. Not to mention, competition in small towns was low. And if Walmart was big enough and provided much value to a particular place, then the store will eventually monopolize the retail service in that area. Success and Legacy Sam Walton's success started to receive attention since the day he started expanding. In 1977, Sam Walton owned 190 stores, and in 1985, the number increased from 190 to 800. I'm going to Walmart. Additionally, Walmart turned into an economic institution. I'm back. 
so soon? I got everything I need at Walmart. That's the idea. That generated an annual income of over $519.93 billion, according to Statista.com. Results for the year 2020 and employed 2.2 million associates in 11,500 stores worldwide, according to corporate.walmart.com. Now, Walmart operates in the U.S. and in more than 15 international markets, including China, Ghana, and Brazil. Walmart stores became so influential that a special term, the Walmart effect, was coined after them. When Sam died on April 5, 1992, his death was relayed by satellites to all the Walmart centers. His success was so tremendous that when alive, Sam received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from George W.H. Bush. Also, Sam was included in 1998's Times list of the 100 most influential people of the 20th century. Moreover, Forbes identified him as the richest person in the U.S. from 1982 to 1988. Sam joined the Junior Achievement U.S. Business Hall of Fame in 1992 and at the University of Arkansas, there is a business college named in his honor called the Sam M. Walton College of Business. Walton and the Books There's an old quote that says, Today's readers are tomorrow's leaders. And in order to strive and achieve the level of success that Sam Walton achieved, you need to first believe that you can. But most importantly, you need to have the necessary educational mindset in order to sustain the journey. And what follows is a list of books that Booked recommends for its followers in order to feed their mind and prepare it for success. Made in America by Sam Walton, an amazing autobiography by the founder of Walmart himself. This book lays the foundation of success based on Mr. Walton's life story. Higher Than the Top by Sam Walton and Dave Thomas, a book about faith. In this book, the authors explain how faith contributed to the success of the personalities mentioned inside of it in order to encourage the reader to take that leap of faith. The Ten Rules of Sam Walton, Success Secrets for Remarkable Results by Michael Bergdahl. In this book, the author reveals and demonstrates the daily habits of the founder of Walmart and how they contributed to his success in order to inspire future entrepreneurs, businessmen, and even students. How and Why Sam Walton Invented Walmart by Vance H. Trimble This magnificent biography that was written by the Pulitzer Prize winner Mr. Trimble dictates the special moments of Mr. Walton's life in order to provide the readers with an exceptional view towards Sam's life. Sam Walton Inspirational Story, Walmart, and Tips for Success, J.D. Rockefeller The title of this book says it all. In this book, the reader will gain some valuable insights about how to succeed in today's world through the examination of Mr. Walton's story. To conclude today's video, we can say that Sam Walton is one of those people that you would enjoy inviting to your house for a cup of tea to enjoy his company. His mindset is simply unbelievable, and his level of humility is mind-blowing. Mr. Walton's success story is indeed one of those legends that should be taught to children since 7th grade. Mr. Walton not only teaches us how to think like a real entrepreneur, but his story also teaches us how to behave like one, so that we can distinguish between the real businessmen who made it from the bottom and those fake wannabe preneurs who seek quick fortune and make money through scamming others. And in case you didn't know, Sam Walton worked as a Sunday school teacher, which is one thing that showcases the immense level of humility that this man had. Not only this, but the set of books related to him encourages us even more to start our own success journey and be better versions of ourselves as we live on. And this is what made Sam Walton and his company Walmart get featured unbooked.